I need to get a second opinion on this matter. Well, joining me now from the Gold Coast in Australia via Zoom is Professor David Richards. Professor Richards is a general medical practitioner and professor at an Australian university in the Faculty of Medicine. He is also part of the Australians uh, for Science and Freedom. Thank you very much, Professor, for being here. I appreciate it. Um, Professor, I know you have uh, written extensively on the efficacy and impact of the mRNA vaccines, which is basically what has been uh, given worldwide. What are your findings? Evening, Mahish. Um, well, it's uh, not so much my findings. It's findings of uh, one of my colleagues in Australia, uh, Kevin McKernan, who um, recently has, well, he's, he's got 25 years of experience in in genomics, in, in genomic sequencing. And he was sequencing some samples that were sent to him of RNA vaccines. And um, during the deep sequencing, much to his surprise, he found substantial amounts of DNA uh, in in the samples. Now, the according to the uh, TGA and according to the FDA, these are RNA vaccines. These these are pure RNA vaccines, and the amount of DNA that uh, Dr. McKernan found was was far in excess of what is considered to be uh, acceptable. Uh, the amount was about thirty percent, I believe. Um, and since then, uh, similar things have been found. Uh, the findings have been validated in a number of uh, research facilities around the world. So it seems to be fairly solid. And uh, the implications of this are quite significant because um, much, much was made in the, early, in the early weeks and months of the vaccine rollout of, uh, about the fact that the RNA is degraded very quickly. Uh, typically, RNA degrades within 24, 48 hours. And so the belief was and the um, the narrative was that the RNA and subsequently the spike protein would disappear from the circulation uh, very, very quickly within within perhaps two or three days, a week at the most. The, signific the significance of the, uh, of the presence of the DNA is that the, the half-life of DNA is not 48 hours. The half-life of DNA is 590 years. It's 590 years. So this puts a totally different complexion on the on the breakdown and the elimination of elements of the vaccination from the body. Now, what the implications of that are uh, uncertain. I mean, it's it's unquantifi it's unquantifiable, and so. But this poses vastly different questions to the the, the beliefs and the uh, and the understanding that was pervasive at the uh, at the rollout at the origins of the first rollout of the vaccinations alarming indeed uh, professor reports are coming from various parts of the world uh, especially concerning heart health in young people what have you found on that front um, is there a link between certain mrna vaccines and heart issues well there's a number of papers currently being circulated looking at the incidence of uh, of um, myocarditis and pericarditis in people receiving the RNA vaccines. Um, fa famously, there was a, a paper published in Thailand uh, last year identifying that about one in eight, 800 recipients of the vaccination experienced myocardial events, um, typically in the form of myocarditis or, or pericarditis. Uh, and that was taken to be a, a rule a, a measure of the incidence of these events in people who are receiving the vaccinations. Um, however, more recently, a number of papers have been published. Uh, one short, uh, already accepted for publication in the European, uh, European Journal of Heart Failure, which suggests that um, the, the incidence may be far greater than was originally, uh, originally reported, even compared to the Thai paper. Now, how do you explain the differences in 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 detection? Well, the the differences are dependent upon how uh, how rigorously you identify the, the 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 
sequence of events occurring in the heart after vaccination. Um, you know, uh, for example, a lot of national reporting systems, they rely on people reporting their symptoms uh, subsequent to subsequent to vaccination. Um, in the Thai study, they used various modalities to identify um, identify injuries that might have occurred in the heart. But in this recent study, it, there's a much more active and um, comprehensive inquiry into what's happening in events subsequent to vaccination, uh, monitoring not only uh, uh, blood tests, uh, but also scanning the heart and uh, and and, uh, and 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 using a panel to a panel of experts to determine whether heart injury has occurred. Now, in this study about to be published in the European Journal of Heart Failure, they found that the incidence of myocardial damage was two point five percent of people receiving vaccination, so which is substantial. Professor, uh, what I'm curious to know, if you remember back in 2020 and 2021 at the height of the pandemic, uh, we were told by governments along with organizations uh, like the, the WHO that, those, uh, that these vaccines are the safest. And in fact, we got them so quick, unlike the other season vaccine, which, they, uh, which take years to make. They made it sound as if the vaccine was so perfectly safe, if not the vaccines, then how should we uh, proceed amid a full-blown pandemic? Well, I, I think there was already a, a pandemic plan in place in most countries. So being, certainly in Australia, uh, in Sweden, um, you know, Tony Abbott had, had spent much, Tony Abbott, who was formerly Prime Minister of Australia, spent much time and detail when he was Health Secretary um, creating a pandemic plan in Australia. And um, Sweden um, famously stuck to their pandemic plan right through the, uh, right through the whole pandemic period. And now we see that Sweden um, adopting a more traditional approach to uh, managing the pandemic are recording incredibly good outcomes uh, as a result of their approach. Um, and so right early on, um, you know, a uh, number of uh, leading epidemi epidemiologists, uh, Jay Bhattacharya from Stanford University, Martin Kuldorf from uh, Harvard and Sanupta Gupta from Oxford University got together and uh, and created or, or, or pr produced the Great Barrington Declaration. And in the Great Barrington Declaration, declaration they articulated very clearly that um, the, 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 the correct approach was to protect the vulnerable, uh, what they term targeted protection, but allow the majority of healthy people, young people, to continue to get on with their lives because basically um, they, they, it was very clear from the data that they'd studied that COVID-19 was not a serious threat to people under the age of 40, that the, the, the mortality rates from COVID-19 in people in younger age groups was less than the mortality rate seen with seasonal influenza. So, um, so basically, it was very clear right at the beginning uh, the path that should have been taken and 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 would have been appropriate. But governments around the world decided, for reasons under beknownst to them, um, that they would adopt a new plan, which seemed to be uh, orchestrated by Deborah Burks at the, from the White House and. Um, and um, and C C CDC um, and and countries fell into line. The UK, Australia, um, it was a it was like a a dog whistle to the world. They 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 sang a tune and everybody danced along. Indeed, uh, very quickly, Professor, what should people who've taken the vaccine, basically each and everyone here in Sri Lanka, should do in order to ensure that uh, we are not victims? What must we keep uh, a lookout for with regard to our health? Um, wow, well, that's a very, very difficult question to answer because because uh, the we, we, this is a novel treatment. It's a novel um, 
a, no, a novel um, therapy. Uh, nobody has ever used um, this kind of technology in large scale settings. And so consequently, there's no experience. But I think um, I think the most important thing is what, what have I seen in my clinical practice? Well, I think the thing that people have uh, um, brought to my attention more than anything else is respiratory issues, you know, breathing problems, um, particularly shortness of breath with exercise. And um, so, you know, if I'm suspicious that someone is developing a, um, you know, some kind of, con you know, some kind of compromise, you know, no matter how it might have occurred, whether it occurred as a result of the vaccination or whether it occurred as a result of COVID or whatever, um, there are some simple blood tests that can be done that, that can, you know, quickly at least eliminate any serious um, consequences. So I would suggest that they visit their, their doctors, tell them that, look, they're, they're, they're feeling these symptoms, particularly fatigue, breathlessness, um, you know, not being able to maintain the exercise uh, performance that they would normally be able to achieve and uh, ask ask them ask their doctor to uh, to you know evaluate the, uh, their their clinical status to see that they they they're maintaining good and proper health you know uh, as um as was said by is it benjamin franklin said an ounce of protection is worth a pound of cure Indeed, uh, we really have to keep this conversation going on, uh, Professor, because this is very important and people will start coming out uh, talking about this matter as, as, as things progress. Let's leave it at that, Professor David Richards from the Australian University. Thank you very much. So after all that we've learned, we wanted to know what our government, the Sri Lankan government, is doing about these issues. Have they taken prompt action to inform everyone if we are feeling this way or that way to get ourselves immediately checked up? Have they provided information on this or, as usual, are they blind to all this and moving on um, up until uh, an outcry from the public sets in or better yet, uh, a Western think tank tells them what to do? So our producers were trying frantically to get a response from the Minister of Health. He spoke to us briefly and then later di directed us to the chief epidemiologist, Dr. Samitha Ginike, who said, he was not worried. All is cool. The vaccine have no issues. And it's not a big deal right now. So there you go, folks. Our trusted government and the health ministry are on top of it. Let's take a short break and more State of the Nation right after this.